Hello students and welcome back to bankexamstudy.com. So in the series of providing important questions, repeated questions for IBPS, RRB, Scale 2 and Scale 3 exams, today we are doing Banking Regulation Act. So students, today we are going to provide 10 questions and tomorrow maybe we are going to provide 10 more questions. So every day we are providing 10 questions. So let's start the session with question number one. Before starting, let me tell you IBPS, RRB, Scale 2, Scale 3, 2023 course has already been started on bankexamstudy.com in which we are providing video classes, notes, quizzes and full entire series. Everything is available on bankexamstudy.com. All the links are available in the description. Ye sari videos ki maine ek playlist bana di hai. Please check the playlist. There are I guess 13, 14 videos in the playlist. Watch all the sessions. Very important. Uh, question number one, which amendment to Banking Regulation Act 1949? First of all, remember the year of enactment increases RBI's power to inspect books of urban cooperative banks. So if you remember the Mehul Choksi and uh, PNB's case, right, the PNB mein scam hua tha. Uh, and in, after that many cases in the urban cooperative banks that happened in 2019, 2018 to 2019. A lot of uh, Punjab and Maharashtra urban cooperative bank scam happened. After that, a lot of amendments were made in the Banking Regulation Act. A lot of changes has been done. Now urban cooperative uh, banks are under the supervision of Reserve Bank of India. So RBI can inspect the books of urban co cooperative bank after amendment in Banking Regulation Act. And the amendment year was 2020. 2020 mein amendment was amendment RBI got the right. <coughs> power mil gi, urban cooperative banks ki books ko inspect karne ki, right? So RBI got the the right to inspect the books. So let me just hide myself so that you can read the entire slide without my face, right? So let's move forward to the question number two. What is the maximum amount of penalty that can be imposed by Reserve Bank of India under Section 47A of Banking Regulation Act 1949. Thus, crore rupee ki penalty maximum jo hai, RBI can impose on any bank if they are, you know, the, there is any default or they are not following any rule, they are against any guidelines, if any bank is against any guideline, maximum fine that RBI can impose is rupees 10 crores according to section 47a which amendment to banking regulation act 1949 introduced the concept of prompt corrective actions pca pca framework was there but it was not part of banking regulation act so it became part of banking uh, regulation amendment act in 2017 amendment right before that it was a non-statutory measure it became part of Banking Regulation Act in the year two, uh, 2017 when this amendment came. So what is the purpose of PCA framework students? We have done PCA framework in depth in the RBI guidelines while a section, please check it. So it is, uh, it was introduced to ensure that banks have, banks take timely corrective action to address their financial weaknesses and maintain the financial health. Okay. So in case the banks are facing a lot of defaults, how to maintain the liquidity and safeguard the deposit uh, depositors money PCA framework was introduced. So jab kabhi bhi PCA lagaya jata hai kisi bank hai, the bank pe toh there are a lot of restrictions, baut sari restrictions laga di jati hain. So a lot of banks were the, uh, under PCA in the year 2019, 2018. Uh, baut sari public sector banks were there under the PCA framework. Now most of them are out of PCA framework. What is the main purpose of PCA framework? Purpose kya hai PCA framework ka? Uh, so basically the purpose is to identify uh, weak banks, take the correct, uh, corrective measures. So basically PCA laga diya jata hai on the banks, on weak banks and there are a lot of restrictions and limitations that are imposed on the banks so that they can get out of uh, the weaknesses. <clears throat> So framework establishes certain thresholds for key indicators such as capital adequacy, asset quality, profitability, and there, there, are, there are triggers uh, which gives a series of corrective actions, right? So we have detail in detail, uh, PEC if you want to study, you can go to financial awareness section, it is there, please check. 
under which laws do urban cooperative banks uh, come under the regulatory ambit of the RBI. So two laws are there. Ek to Banking Regulation Act and the Banking Laws Cooperative Society Act 1955 in those under hai, urban cooperative banks. <coughs> so UCBs are regulated by RBI under two laws. These laws are uh, empowers RBI to issue licenses, inspect, audit, impose penalties and wind up urban cooperative banks. So these are the authorities or the powers of RBIs to provide the financial stability to the urban cooperative banks and safeguard the depositors money. So with reference to the Banking Regulation Act, which among the following are exclusively regulated by RBI. See students urban cooperative banks are not exclusively uh, regulated by RBI and RRBs are also not exclusively handled by or the monitored by RBI because urban cooperative banks, for example, are registered under Cooperative Societies Act of respective states. Uh, so they are regulated by state governments and RBI. Urban cooperative banks are uh, regulated by state governments plus the RBI, not the sole authority of RBI. And when it comes to the regional rural banks, they are monitored by they are regulated by central government and RBI because regional rural banks act 1976 is there so central government and RBI both of them are regulating the regional rural banks what is the role of banking regulation act 1949 in promoting financial stability in India what is a basic question here the act ensures that a bank operate in a competitive environment sets a standards for bank to ensure financially stable and sound to make sure the banks are financially stable and sound. The act provides legal framework for resolving disputes between banks and customers. The act promotes financial inclusion by requiring banks to provide services to undeserved area. Uh, and then act allows banks to in, engage in variety of financial activities. So basically the goal is to set the standards to safeguard the depositors money that is the goal uh, of the banking regulation act 1949 it is an open ended question exam mein kai aise hain. open ended se general se these kind of questions are there in the exam Bahut common hai. how does banking regulation 1949 address the issue of npas how npa npa kaise handle kiya jata hai? basically yahan pe likha jana chahiye tha how the issue of stressed asset is handled under Banking Regulation Act 1949. So NPS or stressed assets are categorized. They are classified. So the banks, they are required to classify and disclose their NPS in their financial system, financial statements, right? So the, that's how the banks, they address the issue of NPS. Then they need to have proper uh, what do you say reserves for these NPAs, right? They need to maintain some reserves for that. <clears throat> That's how the banks, they, uh, they, they handle the NPAs, they handle the stressed assets, right? B is the correct answer. Which amendment to banking regulation 1949 introduced a concept of non performing assets in 1991? amendment the uh, NPA concept was introduced not really important question utna important hai nahi hai. basically you should know the definition of NPA uh, IRAC norms I would highly recommend you to go through IRAC norms I have taught that ye topic many financial awareness section may many bought detail mein padaya hai. so just open the financial awareness topic financial awareness section and you will find IRAC norms bahut hi detail mein IRAC norms padhaya gaya hai just go through that that's really really important what is the purpose of CRR CRR ka purpose kya hai under banking regulation act the purpose is to you know ensure that the banks they are maintaining certain cash reserves to meet the demands of the customers right so the purpose is to uh, make sure the banks they have certain level of cash reserves with them so that is the goal nothing else so students, I hope you like the today's uh, short session. 10 minutes we hum wrap up karte. Uh, I hope you liked it. I hope you like the way we are teaching nowadays. 
you can join the full course on bankexamstudy.com. We are providing complete coverage of the course. And if there is any doubt, you can drop a WhatsApp message or you can make a call. Uh, we are going to answer your doubts. Uh, list of our successful students in 2022. All these students that took our courses in the GBO 2022 exam and they cracked their respective exams. All these students that took our courses in the past and they cracked their respective exams. I'm really, really happy for them. Uh, if there is any doubt in your mind, post a comment in the comment section. All the links are available in the description section. Uh, and that's actually all for today students. Thank you and have a very nice day. Subscribe the channel and like this video because that's really, really important for me. Bye-bye.